MBS clamped down. Fuel surge in numbers of Saudi refugees. Dawn was breaking in Sydney when numerous phone rang. I need you to help me. I need you to speak to people on my behalf. The 20-year-old Saudi asylum seeker recalled the caller saying, the woman, a Saudi teen who identified herself as Rahaf al Kunan, explained to Noura that her passport had been confiscated at a Bangkok airport, and Thai authorities were threatening to deport her. Kunan's story captured international attention last month with her impassioned Twitter plea for asylum. While Kunan barricaded herself in an airport hotel room to prevent her deportation, Noura, who declined to reveal her full name for security reasons, was pacing up and down a public park in Sydney, making calls to Western news outlets. She had never met Kunin, but Noura had recently also fled Saudi Arabia. She didn't need to know who Kunin was, she said, to understand the urgency of her situation. Within days, Kunin was granted asylum in Canada. I picked up my phone and spoke to people about Rahaf al Kunin because I am in a free country, a country that wasn't going to jail me because of what I was saying on the phone, Noura told CNN. The case wasn't about Rahaf, it was about all Saudi women. If any Saudi woman had asked me for help, I would have done the same thing with the same determination, she said. For 72 hours. Noura and two other Saudi women posted to social media and, without identifying themselves, gave media interviews. They tweeted about Saudi Arabia's restrictive male guardianship laws, writing that the legal code granted men considerable impunity, making widespread the alleged domestic abuse that Kunin said she was escaping. It's made asylum a very popular idea in Saudi Arabia, according to Noura. The lure of asylum seeking has been compounded, activists and analysts say, by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's campaign to stamp out dissent in the kingdom. In recent years, he has ordered the rounding up of scores of high-profile clerics, analysts, businessmen and princes, as well as women's rights defenders who are allegedly tortured and who authorities accuse of suspicious contact with foreign entities. The Saudi government has denied the allegations of torture and said it does not condone, promote or allow the use of torture. The prince has been under intense international scrutiny after Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi was killed at the kingdom's Istanbul consulate last October. Saudi Arabia has described it as a botched attempt to return the critic to Saudi Arabia and said the killers would be brought to justice. But for some Saudis abroad, said Saudi activist Yahya Asiri, it underscored what they already suspected, that the kingdom and its foreign offices were off limits to critics. It's absolutely impossible that I would ever go to the Saudi embassy, the London-based dissident told CNN shortly after news of Khashoggi's disappearance broke. I refused to go before. And the Khashoggi situation has made my decision even clearer. In 2013, Asiri, a former member of the Saudi Royal Air Force, went to the United Kingdom to study human rights. He applied for asylum a year later, and he is now a Saudi refugee. His status allows him to steer clear of Saudi officials, he said, eliminating the risk taken by Khashoggi on October 2nd when he entered his country's consulate for paperwork that would allow him to marry and never re-emerged. Saudi refugees on the rise The number of Saudi refugees globally has increased in recent years. In 1993, the first year with recorded cases of Saudi asylum seekers, there were seven Saudi refugees. According to the United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, they took up residence in Jordan, Greece and Sweden, according to the UNHCR's latest public records. Saudi refugees and asylum seekers totaled 2,392 in 2017. Five countries hosted the majority of these Saudis, the United States 1,143, Canada 453, Australia 191. The United Kingdom, 184, and Germany, 147. The figure ebbed and flowed from 1993 onwards. It spiked in 2006 and tapered in ensuing years.
The number of Saudi refugees rose again after the 2011 Arab Spring, which spurred unrest in the kingdom's eastern province.